I had worked indirectly with the network as a reporter, and I had done several programs at the network level, more entertainment programs and that type of thing. So I, I kind of did, but you know, I, I realized that it was very different um, because it's not the same thing when you work, you know, sometimes people don't realize the impact of working in local news. You have a very direct communication with, with your community. You know your audience, you know your community. When you move to the network level, uh, especially when you work in Spanish language media, it's it's a whole new thing because it's there's people that you don't know, uh, the communities that you don't understand, and the nuances of those communities. The, uh, um, and I did not feel connected, for example, with the Puerto Rican community in in New York or the Cuban American community in 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 Miami. I was very much connected with the mostly Mexican American community in Los Angeles and, and the issues that affected Los Angeles. Um, so it was a learning experience because I knew that it was not just sitting there reading the news. I mean, it was a real commitment, it was a real connection with the community that you needed to have. And that mission that I had of empowering the Latino community was, would now be nationwide. So I, it was necessary for me to understand and know this vast community so that I could serve that purpose. You know, it, it's funny because uh, sometimes we talk about uh, the role of a journalist is just to tell the truth and to uh, inform people, and, and it's true, and that's what we do, and that's what we strive to do. But I think that when you work in Spanish, there is a difference because you have an audience that has additional needs. I wouldn't say different needs necessarily because just like any human being, they need to be informed of what's going on in the world, in the country that they live in, in their community, in their countries of origin. But our community uh, needed to understand a little bit more, you know, how to get by in, in, in this country where they felt, uh, where so many felt disconnected, disenfranchised, and they wanted to, to, uh, to be part of society. Uh, so it was an experience. It was uh, a, a learning experience, and I embraced it immediately. And I, you know, tried my best to to connect with all of these and to try to understand and, and know uh, all of these different communities around the country. This was in 1987, 87, 88. Mm -hmm. uh, Latin America was going through a lot of turmoil in in the 80s and, and in the uh, 90s and the early 90s. And I think that that's where one of the biggest adjustments needed to be. I needed to be a lot more aware of the issues that affected Latin America. And, and you know, I started traveling to Central America, to South America. I started covering elections in, in Latin America, interviewing heads of states in Latin America. And this was a time where we still had dictatorships, uh, where many, if not most, of the elections that I covered in Latin America were transitions from a military junta or military dictatorship to a, a civilian uh, government. Um, so there were a lot of those types of issues that were important to embrace and to understand and to understand also the sensibilities of people in, that were living in this country, um, especially when it came to Central America. I think Central America was, was the most heated at the time mm -hmm. uh, with um, civil wars going on in Nicaragua, civil wars going on in also um, El Salvador. Uh, Guatemala also kind of ending their 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 uh, internal wars, so I think it was those types of issues that I needed to understand to embrace, and then some of the domestic um, issues and agendas that each one of these communities had.